interesting thing is that most of the startups that we have in the current batch are at the post MVP stage where, where they have developed the MVP, they have even done the paid pilots with the customers, they have proven the quantifiable value proposition, value statement with those customers. And now they want to scale in more and more countries. They want to work with more and more customers and obviously increase the revenue. So the whole focus is on acquiring customers and generating revenue. Uh, today, we have uh, Mr. John Gibson with us, who is head of platforms, head of technology from SAP Canada. He reports to uh, the president of uh, SAP uh, directly. And I would like to invite him for the keynote. And why I would love to have a keynote from John Gibson, because he's one of the mentors and investors within Ethom's ecosystem. He loves executive coaching. He has been coaching a few startups from the from, from Ethom's ecosystem. And startups just love the mentoring that he's offering, right? Uh, and that's the reason that I would really love John Gibson to come and share his experience, how his experience been with the startups with Ethom, and what kind of value startups are adding to his uh, personality, his professional life, and what kind of value he's adding to the startups. So John, are you ready to say a few words about the startups, about your experience, about the ecosystem? Well, uh, thanks for the invite onto the call, um, Pankaj. I'll only be a few minutes uh, because it's important to hear from all the um, startups. So I just wanted to get things going here. Um, firstly, it sounds like we've got people dotted around. Uh, this is this is great. I, I have a global job. My day job is a global job. So before COVID, I was regularly on an airplane, probably more time on an airplane than, than sat in one location. Currently, I'm in my home office in uh, in Vancouver on the west coast of Canada, uh, and it's still dark outside. It's six o'clock in the morning here. So uh, so I haven't even opened the curtains yet in the home office. So good morning from here. Uh, to everybody else. Um, I love being on this. I've loved uh, talking to uh, the startups that have gone through Ethorm. It's great that Panka just connected me with quite a few of them. Um, one of the reasons I love doing this is because I really admire um, what you guys are doing. Uh, not many people do what you're doing. Not many people aim for something as big as you. Uh, and it's always a thrill for me to talk with you um, and work with you as well. Um, so sometimes it's good to think, why don't people do what you do? Why are they not doing it? Why doesn't everybody do this? Why doesn't everybody um, create a, a startup and really push it to fruition? Um, and really the, the biggest answer is because it's difficult to do. It's, it's a very difficult thing. You've probably already faced difficulties um, so far. You will face difficulties in the, in the future. Your skill really is 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 not to avoid difficulties. Your skill is to deal with the with the difficulties, uh, which is what you have. And 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 uh, I'm sure you've been through that, and I'm sure you'll go through it again in the future. But you have my admiration for doing this and the stamina um, that you have. Um, I have a team of um, highly technical people. We work with the most uh, complex um, accounts over at SAP. I always joke, uh, people ask me, where does my team work? And I, and I say it's uh, where I'm asked to work by the board. Um, so if it's complex, if it's new, but a lot of very senior technology people. And um, I sometimes uh, say to them, hey, this job is meant to be difficult. If it was easy, then anybody could do it. And so the, the difficulty is actually a good thing about it. So when you get your next difficulty, be happy with it. Enjoy it. Enjoy the fact that you can deal with it. Um, as well, or better than anybody else. That's great. Um, last little point I wanted to just mention and talk to you about is really you as an individual. I know we're going to hear about your startup. We're going to hear about your business today. We'll talk a lot about businesses in the future and your business plan and the market and your product and everything else. Um, but don't forget in the middle of all of this is you as an individual and, and the experience that you're gaining on this journey is, is invaluable to you, whether you're at the start of a career um, or whether you're doing something at the end of your career because you already wanted to do it. This journey is really invaluable to you. 
Uh, the skills that you learn doing this will last with you forever. Hopefully there's enjoyment for you as well in doing this. And, and your mentality and being able to do this and pushing yourself to do this is, is a hugely valuable commodity. So don't just think of growth as being something that you want to do in your business. Uh, think of growth as being something that's very personal to you. It's very much a personal journey for each one of you. So, so take a little bit of time every now and again to step back and, and not just think about your business. Think about your own personal journey as you do this. Be honest with yourself about your own strengths and weaknesses and enjoy the journey. Enjoy what you're doing. So I'll leave it there. Brief call. It's really important to hear from all of you. I'm really looking forward to hearing all of your stories here. Great to connect with you. And I'll hand it back to Pankaj. Thank you. John, really, really appreciate your words. Uh, now, I want to talk about the agenda. So obviously, the startups will be presenting uh, about uh, what they are doing about their business, about their product, tech, traction, team, and so on and so forth. But obviously, they won't be able to talk about the complete business plan, the financials, uh, the competitive you know, landscape and things of that nature within six to seven minutes that, that they have to present, right? So the idea is that startups will be talking about the most important stuff right now on the call. They will talk about the achievements, the high level summary of the startup. And then based on that, we will try to understand whether I as a mentor can add value to the startup or not whether I'm really excited about what the startup is doing or not. And if yes, then I can do a deep dive with that startup. I can understand everything about the competitive landscape or the future milestones, the projections, the financial projections and things of that nature. And then I can decide, hey, how I can support the startup as a mentor, right? With the customer acquisition or with the strategies, with the insights, with the milestones or uh, with, with, you know, uh, with the investment. Uh, and, and what will be my scope of work, will be the commitment, investment, and things of that nature, right? So obviously, we'll have a deep dive with the startups later once we know, okay, these are the, 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 the startups that I'm really excited about. So that's the agenda. And uh, I would like to invite a uh, first startup to talk about their product and what they're doing. Okay, so once again, hello everyone. Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Anna, I'm the founder and CEO at Flora. So Flora supports both physical and mental health of women from teenage years and right into menopause. Right now, our main product focuses on fertility, pregnancy and postpartum. So I'm mostly going to talk about that. A little bit of uh, the background of the prog problem, advanced maternal age practices are on the rise worldwide. And this causes a big increase in pregnancy and childbirth complications. Not only that, it is getting harder and harder for couples to conceive. Apart from physical health, maternal mental health has become an extremely important issue. It is estimated that one in five women uh, experience postpartum depression and one in seven experience prenatal one. This makes it up to 28 million women suffering from mental issues worldwide every year. And this number grew hugely since last year because of lockdowns and closure of maternity classes. Women feel isolated and detached from the community. So to solve this problem, we have developed uh, the Flora app that empowers women to take control of their well-being. So how does that work? The app monitors users' pattern of sleep, exercise, and heart rate to understand their lifestyle and stress level. Of course, the more they input and the more devices that can be connected, the more precise our data is. But it's possible to use this without the device. Apart from this physical data, we use AI chatbot to prompt communication, conversation with the woman, so that she's able to voice what is troubling her. This chatbot uses uh, cognitive behavior therapy to help users reflect on their problem. Uh, problem. We use state-of-the-art of uh, birth model for feature extraction from the Japanese dialect, uh, from Japanese and English dialects. Then using the OpenAI GPT algorithm, we uh, form the replies to the person's comments or questions. To train and fine-tune the model, uh, we use questions and answers for groups from the popular web platforms for mental health support, where people ask questions and doctors and physiologists make, make answers for that. Uh, finally, we create content on mental health, uh, sexual wellness, and self-care. We also believe in the accessibility and democratization of healthcare and the power in the community. So Flora places a lot of emphasis on group sessions and workshops. 
Uh, to sum up the benefits of technology, first of all, we tune in our AI into the lifestyle of the users, engaging with them and helping them when, when help is needed. Uh, second, we take health holistically, putting emphasis on mental health. And finally, to conquer loneliness and isolation, we provide group therapies and workshops. Uh, to give you a little perspective of our roadmap, we raised uh, 1000 Ten thousand dollars on and crowdfunding in Japan, and released better version of the app in December 2020. We had more than 300 better users that used it for over a month, mostly from Japan, United States, and India. And we received immensely positive feedback, with women saying that they felt uh, cared for and supported while using it. Uh, this month, we started POC with uh, Finitex Holding, a Japanese uh, insurance company, on maternal mental health. Uh, as for the business model, we have a hybrid business model with uh, B2C, uh, that is B2C, B2B, and B2B2C. Uh, we also take 10% commission for referral, referrals to wellness professionals or physiologists. Uh, as for the market, Femtech market uh, is booming right now. It is said to be worth uh, $50 billion by 2025, and since 2018, its size uh, more than doubled. If you take only a reference market in Japan, uh, it reaches $2.3 billion. As for the founding team, um, I'm the founder and CEO. I have a legal degree from Kyoto University in Japan and around two years of launching digital products in Japan. And my co-founder and CEO has over six years experience in AI algorithm development, development and machine learning. Uh, we develop our healthcare algorithm together with biomedical data analytics lab in Osaka University and the contents of the app is overseen by licensed midwives and psychologists. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, yeah, my name is Cam Potter and yeah, thank you for having us. Um, I'm here with my co-founder, Ken Lang. We're here to talk to you about Stingray, which is our medical tech company. We use AI to combat chronic disease. Um, AI and regenerative medicine is going to um, change the way um, medicine is administered and give those suffering from chronic illness much better alternatives for treatment, but also hopefully for recovery. We have patented, secure, and award-winning software as a service platforms that we administer. Uh, uh, the first market we chose is diabetes, mainly because of the scale of the problem, but also there's unprecedented growth and it's become a, a massive global pandemic and the expertise of our team, we have worked in this field before. Um, the doctors on our medical panel are very uh, well versed and endocrinologists obviously um, with expertise in this field. You can see that diabetes is a massive problem. 463 million people have it and it's growing exponentially. So our goal is to prevent and treat diabetes via two tools. Um, ultimately, we're seeking to find a cure, which is, you know, maybe a little bit out there, but hopefully we can do some amazing things along the way. Um, the problems that we're, we're addressing in the diabetes space is that one in two um, diabetics are undiagnosed. There's 374 million people that are at risk um, of develop, developing type 2 diabetes. The massive um, healthcare expenditure, over 10% of the global health expenditure is on diabetes and it causes a tremendous amount of deaths. The first tool is a diagnostic tool. Um, essentially, the patient visits the doctor, the doctor, um, the GP provides the assessment using our, our tool just by, via a couple of clicks and uh, there's an outcome. Um, a rating is given and a treatment plan is developed as required. Uh, Here's a demonstration um, of our prototype. This is for a 43-year-old woman who's had two pregnancies. Her numbers are pulled in from the uh, medical records platform. There's no invasive testing needed to be done. Um, the diabetes pedigree function uh, pulls in outlying variables, and it's a proprietary algorithm that um, gives it, uh, helps the doctor give a rating. So as you can see, it runs through pretty quickly. The numbers are automatically pulled in. It gives a rating of for her of approximately 27%, which is at uh, low risk and not considered need for uh, interventional treatment. Our second tool is uh, our regenerative therapy tool. Uh, so essentially this is using AI to personalize and optimize um, uh, stem cell therapy using uh, autologous stem cells or stem cells that come from the patient. So this av avoids the risk of infection 
risk of rejection and um, transferring disease. It also uh, simplifies the process. This has been done for quite a few years, but not effectively, less than 50% effective. And it has um, seen a lot of complications up to and including death. So we realized that this could be an amazing thing if it's done properly. So our tool um, reduced, eliminated any kind of um, negative side effect and also uh, is incredibly effective, as you can see, 80%. We're able to participate in a clinical trial of over 2,000 uh, 2, patients. 80% um, of the patients saw a positive outcome. And what I mean by that is they had insulin reduction usage, elimination of need for insulin, um, uh, elimination of uh, chronic conditions such as um, osteoarthritis, um, retinopathy of the eyes, and um, uh, organ failure or potential for organ failure was eliminated and reduced. This is, it was not permanent by any stretch. The average was about 12 to 14 months of, of um, having positive uh, effects from the regenerative therapy using the AI to optimize it. We've got good traction here in Australia. Uh, we've got some early adopters that are using the diagnostic tool, uh, six clinics uh, are very pleased with how it's working. The Royal Australian College of GPs and the Australian Patients Association also recommend it and endorse it, and they're going to um, utilize it in their network. So that's, we're looking at about 40,000 GPs who will be um, participating in usage of, of our diagnostic tool. We also have stem cell advocates that are on board for our stem cell platform. The market opportunity for chronic disease is massive. As, as I've mentioned before, we are focusing on diabetes right now, um, but the Australian market, uh, we're looking at $80 million plus annual recurring revenue growing into Singapore, USA, and China at a fairly exponential rate. And then the rest of the world is also quite massive. No one else is doing it, doing this exact um, diagnostic tool with artificial intelligence, nor the regenerative therapy with artificial intelligence. We're in the process of getting um, TGA, HSA, and FDA approval. Uh, so we are uh, using a, um, a third party contractor to, to help us navigate that. And we're on the verge of having that completed. As I mentioned, the, the revenue is, is quite massive, as you can see in Australia, which is not a, a very large country population wise, it's quite large. And then it grows exponentially through Singapore, India, and China. Basically, the um, revenue share model is our business model for the diagnostic tool. Um, the patients go see the doctor, the healthcare, um, or the insurance company will, will pay. We have a, a line item assigned to that. We'll revenue share with the GPs and the channel partners who are um, endorsing our product. And then we receive um, the balance of that, which will be about $15 per test, which is quite massive when it's such a large volume play. Our team, um, we have an experienced advisory panel. Uh, we have six doctors, endocrinologists, and GPs, as well as um, industry leaders in the medical field here in Australia. Myself and Ken provide technical and operational experience and have worked extensively in this field. Thank you very much for your time. And yeah, please feel to reach out, feel free to reach out um, whenever you you whenever you want to. Thanks a lot. I'm Jason from uh, Hong Kong Water Bento. Water Bento is a Hong Kong food technology startup transforming food service using our patented hot chain bento machine platform. In traditional food service industry, the pain points of traditional restaurants are high rent, high labor costs, and the impact by coronavirus. Water Bento is providing a hot chain bento machine platform to transform food service. The advantage of our platforms are low rent, low labor costs, and good hygiene to be anti-coronavirus. Then how can we achieve such advantage? The core components of our platform is our patented hot train bento machine. Hot train means that after the foods are cooked, they are always kept at above 60 degrees. During the logistic train, and inside the machine to ensure the foods fresh, hygienic, and ready to eat. The features of our machines are hot holding, speedy, hygienic, and with our shelf-owned IPs. We have received three patent granted in this area 
and we have three patents pending, including one in Japan. Let me show you a video demonstrating the operation of the machine. Yes, we got the number one and the only one license in this area in Hong Kong. We are not a company selling the machine, but we are providing an all-in-one platform to help restaurant chains expand sales channels with our bento machines. The platform includes machine, hot chain logistic equipment, license approval support, IoT, and e-payment solutions. The market for bento takeaway by bento machines is huge. No matter in Hong Kong or in Japan, the SOM is as large as 0.1% of Hong Kong and Japan's GDP. Then what is our business model? How can we make money? We have B2C and B2B to C model. B2C is only for our Hong Kong market to sell our own brand bentos to prove the operation of the platform. And for B2B2C market, we do technology licensing of our platform to restaurant chains. We charge them the installation fee and also the commission from the sales transaction. Who are our ideal customers? For B2C, the end users are typically busy office workers who have very limited time of lunch break. So they can use the machines at the lobby of their office building so that they don't need to travel to the restaurant or waste time in waiting in the restaurants. Every day they can save 30 minutes, then the time saved can be translated to over 1,000 US dollar per year just for one person. For B2B2C market, our, we are doing technology licensing to restaurant chains with central kitchen, SOP, and willingness to introduce 10 plus machines at a batch. The bento sales through the machine and the platform have been verified in our operation in Hong Kong. We have expanded to 12 sales locations in just 13 months in Hong Kong, and we have sold over 70,000 pieces of bento through the platform. The business model has been recognized by mainstream media in Hong Kong and also local and global organizations, including Hong Kong Cyberport, Hong Kong NIMHK, China Alibaba Entrepreneurship Fund, Singapore Atom, Japan ILS Tokyo Government, Jetro, and also Mitchell Bank. About the financial, we have raised US 1.1 million US dollar. The bento sales alone has exceeded half a million US dollar. Year over year sales growth is 500%. About the funding, we are raising pre-A stage fundraising. Um, the complete uh, fundraising is 1.1 million US dollar and we are doing the remaining 2 million US dollar by convertible note. The funding raise will be used in the R&D for our next generation patented machine, hot train kitchen robotization, and also integration with delivery platform. Last but not least, our founders team. I'm Jason, CEO of the company. I started in Japan and also worked in Japan Sony for years. Then that, that's why I have such a passion of bento and bento machines. Our head of engineering is Dr. Stephen, who is a PhD in electronic engineering. He is also an expert in machine reliability, has 35 patents granted. The food quality is controlled by our native Japanese chef, who is a former head chef of a big supermarket chain in Hong Kong. Please join us. We are looking for food service company and venture capital to transform food service together with our future ready food tech the hot train bento machine platform. Thank you.
So hello everyone, uh, thank you for coming to see Intentify and the other startups. My name is Shai Rosenzweig and I'm the CEO of Intentify. Um, together with me is uh, Daniel Chenelen. We both come with uh, 25 years of experience in marketing automation, sales and enterprise sales in B2B. We worked in multiple startups and corporates. Um, so we've seen lots of um, enterprise software solutions for sales and marketing. And we decided to start Intentify from our own uh, experience and the lack of the market. We are based in Israel. We have eight employees and we've been running three years um, so far. So <clears throat> as you know, the B2B uh, marketing market is huge. Uh, usually it's the second expense in companies. 85% of the uh, expense goes to digital marketing, especially in the COVID area. We see more and more moving to the digital marketing uh, budgets. And this market is quite crowded, but for predictive intent, uh, this is quite a green field and it um, has lots of opportunities to grow. What you see in many companies today is that they have CRM and marketing automation platforms, but when they come uh, and understand, try to understand what's going in the market and they look for data, the data is siloed, outdated and partial. And this is very hard to accelerate growth when you don't have the data. So what we do in Intentify is basically we help B2B companies to target ideal buyers by looking on intent at the stakeholder level and the company level. And what we do is we reduce the customer acquisition cost by up to 80% and increase the new account to customer by up to 50%. And we saw it across the board with all our design partners. So as I said, we've been in, um, in this venture for three years. Two of them, we developed the product. Last year, we launched the MVP. We worked with 10 design partners. We generated 200K. We replaced the three Zoom in for licenses. And, and now we are shifting towards the enterprise and we're working with uh, two um, companies, HP and uh, Sony Moto on POCs. What, what we saw also in the enterprise market is that companies like HP try to develop this kind of solution and face some technical challenges. And therefore they started the POC with us. And now we are in a, also in a phase of uh, fundraising as we adjust to the enterprise market. We're raising 1.5 million at 5 million uh, valuation. Our business model is based on annual subscription. So for the um, design partners, it was uh, between 15 to 60K annually. And for the enterprise, we're looking on 200, 300, even $1 million deals uh, for our solution. Uh, and the next uh, fundraising will allow us to sell to the enterprise market within three to six months. So why are we different? We are the only uh, player in the market that analyzes um, internal data like CRM and marketing automation, but also look on public web sources and analyze millions of web pages that companies are uh, searching for and reviewing on a daily basis. So we create this database uh, out of intent. And we are also the only player in the market that is able to understand the buying committee. Within, within a global company. So let's take General Electric. Usually you have 30, 40, 50 people that could uh, potentially participate in, a, in a buying a, a new product or service. And our solution can identify most of them and explain what are the key priorities for each one of the uh, stakeholders. So, Usually we start by taking keywords and the market, uh, the go-to market, and then we comprise this intent database. And from that, we start with marketing campaigns that generate new meetings and customers. 
who are we targeting? We are targeting tech companies uh, that has 1,000 employees and above. Um, usually the marketing, the B2B marketing uh, executives and manager, whether it's demand generation, growth, CMO, VP, and head of marketing. Thank you. Happy to answer your questions. Hi, everyone. Thanks uh, for let us, uh, sharing with you our startup. So my name is Yeni Valfi. I'm um, the co-founder and CEO of Projects. Uh, we have with us today Tal, our CDO. And uh, together with Yuval, we uh, established Projects. Project is a AI-powered image recognition platform. So quick intro about ourselves. Uh, we started in February uh, 2020, just before uh, COVID uh, hits our, all of us. Uh, but we're still, we uh, uh, very quick, we, uh, we established a successful POCs in July 2020, and uh, we got our first uh, initial paying clients in uh, December 20. We have three patents application in preparation. Uh, we are a fully self-funded company, so everything we did until now was uh, uh, basically uh, based on our uh, internal uh, funds. Um, we finished 2020 with total income of 50K, and our current MRR is 15K. And the, uh, the image recognition uh, market is uh, going almost to double itself in the next uh, several years. And it's already uh, done more than uh, 27 billion in uh, 2019. And we are currently in our uh, raising uh, uh, seed funding uh, process. So we all understand that there is a, a big gap in AI industry. And uh, one of the biggest problem is data. And the, uh, the quality of the data is basically what's going to define our AI application and our machine learning. And the more the data is quality is the better for us. So eventually now, which everything is going towards visual, we understand that we need to find a way to accelerate and to close the gap between the visual and the application of the AI. And this is exactly what we project trying to do. We're trying to simplify, accelerate and reduce the cost and the resource in order to reach to a validated AI and machine learning application. So let's see what we have to do in the market and how projects helps to solve the problem. So when you want to start an any AI project or machine learning, you need a data. You can have the data, you can buy the data, you can even use third-party companies to generate the data for you. Once you have the data, of course, you need to cleanse it, you need to label that, you need to filter the data, and only then you can start training this data with any other third-party platform for auto machine learning and other prediction models. And eventually, if you have the time and the resource and the, uh, uh, and the investment, you will get into the point that you have an AI application, which you can validate against a real world use case. So this is a very complex and very uh, uh, expensive, let's say workflow. And, and we as a project, we want to accelerate this, project, this process. And the way to do that, especially in the visual world, is to try to find the best and efficient answer in the fastest way to three questions. To detect the object, to identify the object, and to classify the object. And in that way, we actually close the gap in much efficient and faster way. So our goal and our revolution technology is to take this uh, numerous amount of visual data, upload that into our imagery platform, and answer it in a very fast and efficient way to the question is of object detection, object identification, and object classification. And once the customer or the client or the corporate or organization or software vendors have this answer, they can then use this data into their AI applications for the real world use cases. So let's see how we do that because this is an ongoing process when you always need to update the data, you always get more information and you have always have more requests from the market. So the way we build our technology, and this is one of our patents uh, that we have, is that we see it as like a, a, a virtual app store. When the customer can choose which classes, which categories, which features it wants to extract from the images. And once you define this technical use case, it can be the vehicle type, it can be the maker, it can be the model. Then he upload this raw data into our cloud platform and we provide them the outcome he needed, the outcome he expected, it could be JSON, XML, masking a, a format 
for his AI application, for his real world use case. It can be for automotive, it can be for insurtech, it can be for homeland security. It depends what he wants to do. So now in that way, we can actually accelerate the development and the, uh, uh, the process of implementing and, and uh, uh, introducing new AI applications to the market. And, and this is basically what we are offering to our clients. So speaking about clients, let's see one of our use cases, uh, a company named OmniQ. This is a, a US-based company. They are dealing with mainly the uh, automotive area and they have different type of AI applications for parking and operations, security enforcement, uh, access control, and many others. So this company has enough information. So th th they don't need really a company that will generate them the information or they don't want to buy the information, they have enough of it. And they also definitely don't want to deal with human in the loop because it takes a lot of resources, uh, project management and operation around it. So these companies are also not relevant for them. So the option left is to do it in-house with the most efficient way, but this efficient way is still very expensive. Expensive. They had uh, three full-time employees in Salt Lake City. They have one person in Israel, help them with the data preparation for the machine learning. They had the labeling team in offshore. And of course they needed to build the whole pipeline in-house in order to extract the data. Once they switched to projects, it was much simpler. It was of course, uh, a, a reduce the cost and the operational around it, but it also simplified the whole process by just logging to projects, choose their industry, which is was automotive in their case, choose the classes they want to deal with. It can be the car vehicle, the car make, the car a, a color, the jury restriction or anything else, and choose the type of the outcome they want to use in order to implement that in their machine learning and their AI application. So eventually the value that we provide to this customer was very clear. And this is why he's keep working with us and we have more clients like him. It's ease of use, okay? They don't need the whole operation process around it. It's a codeless platform. So there is no special requirements for setup. There is no integration. It's really simply simple to work with us. The fast results, because we're working on a cloud-based uh, environment and GPUs, and we are part of NVIDIA inception program. And eventually the most important is of course the, the, the cost. I mean, 2x in, in, in cost reduction and 10x in volume, it means that the customer get more data he can process with our platform for less money. So eventually this company can introduce new AI applications to the market and of course improve their existing AI applications they already have. So this is projects. Uh, we are truly believe that we are a revolutionary company in the computer vision and the AI industry. And if you have any question, guys, feel free and uh, I'd be more than happy to help you. Good morning, good evening, everyone. My name is Alex. So let me go into this one. All right, so. So we can see a lot of challenge today uh, in the healthcare ecosystem, especially when it comes to health insurance, doctors, patients, and healthcare service providers. It is not human centric and not cost efficient. There are still a lot of people in Asia who are uninsured, even in developing areas like Singapore and Hong Kong. They either have to queue up for public healthcare systems or pay a uh, premium fee when they visit private clinics and hospitals. Even you have an insurance plan, we found that 8% of the health insurance premium you paid, it's spent on under unutilized um, inpatient services. For the younger populations, the more on-demand outpatient and wellness services are barely covered. In Asia, digitalization of healthcare sector is still relatively behind. Private medical records are still on the paper and patients are not able to keep track of the body conditions despite the high penetrations of smartphone. So Mixcare Health, it's providing a health tech solution to offer affordable and accessible outpatient medical and wellness services to the underserved populations. Users are able to access healthcare partners, including medical and wellness vendors up to discounted and transparent rates. You can also speak to these experts through chat, text, video at all time when you need it. We are a healthcare platform solving two side problem. Uh, both patients and healthcare partners. Mixcare allows customers allow uh, access to a thousand 
healthcare partners and clinics in 600 locations at a discount rate up to 7% off. We don't calculate risk like insurance providers. Our solutions is open to everyone from newborns to aging senior with pre-existing medical con conditions. On the other hand, we help healthcare partners such as clinic to bring in additional customers and drive, drive more sales and open up new markets that, that are typically hard to reach and advertise because of the regulations. We would like to show you a quick demo how our mobile app works. So after you have uh, subscribed our membership plan, uh, you're able to access our healthcare and doctor list by locations and categories. You can enjoy the discounted consultation price when you show them the digital medical card. You also have an AI power recommendation engine. For example, you, you are diagnosed for overweight we would recommend you are a range of services from diet plan, personal trainer, and even supplement. Another strong feature we have is an e-medical record. And with your consent, your, your usage record would be synced to the app. One use case is you, you don't have to remember, remember the exact names of the medication you are allergic to. In the meantime, we are running a SaaS model and we charge an annual subscription fee to individuals, employers, and insurance partners. We are charging an annual membership fee as low as US, US, US uh, $20 to $1,000 per person based on the service goal. In just three months, we are pleased to have registered 1,500 individuals, 1,000 medical services providers, and 200 health, healthcare wellness partners to strengthen our platform. These are some of the our services we provide, such as GP, SP, body check vaccine, mental care, physiotherapy, dietitian, personal trainer, and et cetera. In the next six months, we are going to launch different healthcare programs tar targeted to different segments of the population, such as new mothers, young children, long-term care patients. By providing more unique sec uh, specific treatment to the unique segment, we foresee the potential users will be more um, adopt to our solutions. Mixed Care Health was incorporated in 2020 mid 2020, and we have participated in several accelerated programs subsidized by Hong Kong and Singapore companies, such as Plucking ASEAN, Hong Kong Cyberport, and Mizuho Bank. We have secured 200K uh, from angels and government grants so far. Uh, our largest uh, distribution channel is B2B2C partnership. Um, we partner with different business partners, such as Money Hero, Cafe Pacific, and digital insurers such as Blue. We are now in discussion with four other insurers, such as Cigna, Zurich, China Life, one of the largest insurance companies in China. We are not competing with insurance company to replace the solution, but a strategic partnerships. Last year, we partnered up with Blue, a virtual insurer in Hong Kong, to enhance the product differentiations, drive down the uh, manufacturing costs, and speed up the market uh, launch time. We first launched in Hong Kong, um, and we have a very aggressive uh, expansion plan in ASEAN. In three years, we plan to expand to Singapore, Malaysia, the Philippines, and the Thailand. Our, our team come from Japan and Hong Kong with extensive um, background in insurance, tech startup, wellness, professional service sector. Mixcare is not our first startup. Me and my co-founder, Kevin, exit our first travel tech startup back in 2018, invested by 500 startups. Hong Kong, China, and Korean government back in 2017. Uh, we are looking for uh, strategic partners, investors, and mentors to grow mixed care together in ASEAN. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time. We are happy to take the discussion online, offline. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jay, um, co-founder and CEO of Singapore. Uh, I'm based in Singapore right now, uh, getting close to midnight. <laughs> okay, um, today I'm going to talk about how we want to help people achieve success in life through digital twins. So when we look around us, I think we see actually very few people who look forward to going to work on Mondays. And I think it's kind of sad given that actually a lot of people spend more than half of their lives at work. 
So how can these people actually achieve success in life if that's the case? And what can we do to actually help them? So the question is, is it an issue about passion? Is it about skills, personality, or is it about working with their coworkers or even our culture? So the concept that we came up with is to build a world of digital twins to help people improve their success in life. And what do we mean? So our concept of a digital twin is a virtual model of our mind, a model of how we think, how we feel and act, built using data that's specific to each of us. So that would be our personality, interests, values, our cognitive abilities, competencies, experience, and things like that. So with these digital twins, we can predict outcomes, we can simulate outcomes and improve outcomes in life. So for example, we can define what success looks like, we can predict how close people can get to that, and we can recommend decisions, we can recommend improvement areas, and we can even learn from actual outcomes, right, to improve our recommendations in the future. Now, to, to validate our concept, we needed to find a large, rich data set to prove that this whole thing actually makes sense. And we actually came upon uh, the space of careers to validate our concept. And everything I mentioned to you about using different data to build models, defining success, making recommendations and predictions and learning uh, using the machine learning loop can be done in this space because the, the space of human resource and career is actually very established for many decades already. So everything from school to workplace, we have supported a lot of decisions such as selecting students into programs, hiring graduates, hiring mid-career professionals, selecting high potential employees, and even personalizing learning and development for each person. Um, so we've been really lucky to get prominent organizations to validate our concept. And I think what's really nice is that we found a business model for them to pay us and contribute their data while they're doing that. Um, so you can see we target mainly large enterprises as customers. So they include Nestle, Ricky Bankiser, Baxter, Heineken, KPMG across Asia. And our business model is an annual recurring SaaS contract. So our platform has been able to deliver, deliver pretty good results to show that actually our vision is possible. So for example, over 90% of the hires made on our platform actually predict, uh, actually perform one year into the role as we predicted. We find that there's over 90% accuracy between our platform predictions and how managers of employees actually give ratings sometime down the road. We're also able to reduce uh, man hours up to 70% in terms of our decision-making process. So our customers have been really happy. They've made and published various case studies with us. And actually, I want to also walk you through some of the um, unique features of our platform. So one thing our platform does is provide a holistic profile of each person. Holistic in the sense that we look at hard skills, we look at soft traits, and we predict specific attitudes and behaviors. And we do that by drawing in and unifying various kinds of data sources, such as our resumes, um, personal, uh, psychometric assessments, video interviews, employee records, like performance, length of service, things like that. And we put them into our models and then we can get a lot of predictions down to a number like 7.3 you see on the screen that can represent fit to the role, can represent culture fit or even how much potential the person has. Now, how do we do that? Oh, sorry. So I think what's, what's different about this compared to many other providers out there is uh, they tend to look at things in, in silos. So whether they look at skills in the CV, whether they look at just personality assessments, and they leave a lot of that putting data together to the human, which is where the failure point usually is, because we all know humans aren't great at dealing with too much data. How do we do, how do we make all these uh, really good predictions? Uh, we've got success profiles for tens of thousands of jobs in our database. And what's a success profile? Basically, it's a combination of the soft traits and hard skills that are required for people to succeed in their roles. Uh, we actually enhance that with um, data of our customers' employees. For example, analyzing the difference between high performers and average performers to figure out what actually makes the difference. And the foundation for all that is over 50 years of organizational psychology research. Again, what's interesting here is compared to other companies, we take a very holistic approach, whereas other players tend to look at it very piecemeal. So for example, they look only at skills or they only look at certain qualities. But again, putting it all together and being able to articulate what create success, I think that's the value. Um, our platform personalizes learning and development for each person. Um, while many providers out there tend to use a more one-size-fits-all approach, but I think it doesn't really always work given that each of us have different strengths and development areas. We also provide dashboards uh, for our customers to look at their people as a group. Um, we also integrate with uh, existing uh, HR systems um, such as SAP success factors, um, because that helps to really improve the adoption and seamless workflow for a lot of our customers. 
Our leadership team is experienced in building and selling enterprise software. Uh, we've also got experience in scaling and exiting other tech startups, and also deep expertise in HR, in psychology, and in uh, AI. Right, our theme team of uh, 30 people are spread across Singapore and Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, we've also been lucky to be well recognized by the industry. Uh, we have won various global and regional HR, tech, and startup competitions. So what's next for us? Uh, we started expanding into Europe and US uh, this year out of uh, client base in Asia, and we'll be continuing to grow our product engineering team. Um, aside from a lot of the HR applications that I've discussed with you today, there are actually a lot of future applications in education, in financial services, things like that. And that's really where our, this vision of uh, digital twins can really apply. Uh, we are raising 5 million US now, and we've previously raised 4 million in angel funding from prominent angel investors. So I hope you can join us in our vision to improve the lives of people, even though we're really not even at 1% of that today. Thank you. Hi, hi everyone. I'm Kirill Sitz and I'm a co-founder and CEO of Taurus Advisors. And uh, we develop a product which helps banks to better understand the fees that the banks are paying to payment systems like Visa and MasterCard and optimize those costs up to 20%. Um, so there's a, around $24 trillion market of processing uh, payments by Visa and MasterCard. And the key roles are the issuer bank, so the bank which typically that's a bank which issues the card to a cardholder. Then there's an acquirer which enables merchant to accept the payments and then there are payment systems in, in between. And uh, even uh, within this new banks area, almost 90% of all cards issued by new banks are still being based on Visa and MasterCard. And for their services, payment system charge both roles, so both issuer and acquirer different fees. And these are the revenues for those payment systems. And globally, they sum up to 70 or $71 billion per annum. And the interesting fact is that uh, this revenue, so meaning these fees, um, the amount of fees is growing like 10 to 12% per year, while the processed volume is growing only like 6 to 8% per year, meaning that there is every year that more and more fees coming in and the burden is growing. Um, on the other hand, the fees themselves, so the structure in particular invoices, that so cumbersome that uh, uh, average bank is telling us that they would like to better understand what they are paying for because there are like half of the fees are more or less clear like transactional and volume but there are a lot of smaller items which can sum up to like 40 percent of the total fees and based on our experience uh, just by being more clear about the particular items the in the fees that the banks are paying for they could save up to 20 percent for those fees and we developed the product uh, which actually helps them to do that. So it first helps them to, so we take the data that banks is already exchanging with payment system, like the invoices, the clearing data and the quality reported data. So we do not need any like special preparation on the bank side. Uh, then the, we take the data to our models and uh, we produce three types of values to them. First is the analytical part. So just to be able to understand allocation of a particular fee down to a single transaction or a product or even to line of business uh, because that's not clear also sometimes so how, how what is performance of issuing versus acquiring business because not all fees are like clearly allocated between those uh, then the second thing is to be able to forecast the fees based on the transactional patterns of your customers so how much would you pay be paying next year or then the second part of it is how to reconcile the fees that you should have been paying this year versus the amount you've been invoiced by the payment system. And the third part is to actually, what is the cost saving potential? So mo the model calculates uh, each particular items that based on our experience can be like get rid of. So for example, there is like information services that are not typically not used by the banks, but are still being paid for or some penalties. And then, so we calculate the, the system calculates the potential and also provides a set of recommendations to realize this potential. 
So we already have several pilots performed uh, here locally in Russia and CIS. So a couple of examples are the VDB Bank is the, one of the leading Russian banks with 15 million customers. And the uh, Russian subsidiary of uh, Societe General Group, it's, this bank also has around like 5 million customers here in Russia. Um, we have in the team, so the core team has a vast experience in payments, uh, data analysis and banking. So me, myself and my partner, co-founder Igor, so we used to work for MasterCard for quite a lot of time. And uh, so I was dealing on consulting part of it while Igor was dealing on the technical part. So we know on like hands-on approach, what is uh, about this connecting a bank to a payment system? What is the structure of the fees they're paying for? And also we have Dennis who is after our BI and data analysis part. And besides that, we have two business analysts uh, being spread between Russia and Kazakhstan right now. As for our traction, we started around mid last year. So our first goal was to, once we get this idea, was to identify, do some kind of feasibility study. So identify, are there any customers that are willing to pay for such types of services? And we successfully passed that. So we did several pilots for last year. So and the sales uh, right now is up to around like 70 K dollars. We also gained the strong pipeline in our local markets for this year and several opportunities have already been converted into new contracts. And for this year, we have plans to like scale up locally. So go into more like regular usage of the product. We, are, we have some plans to upgrade the backend part of it in order to be like more easy to integrate, to be integrated with the uh, transactional data from the banks. And also we're aggressively testing international markets because the good thing about the product is that as we're using the data sets which are exchanged between uh, Visa and MasterCard and the uh, banks, so then the tariffs between different regions and particular countries are for sure different, but the data structure and the data is used is the same. So uh, that's why for us it's quite easily to scale the product to a new geography. So it meaning just to amend the tariffs that's why our goal for this year is to test the markets, test the ground, so identify is this the demand. And that's why we're here and we believe that there is a material potential in Southeast Asia because there's a lot of transactional business which should be interested in understanding on the very deep level the unit economy of their products. So basically that's it. Thanks a lot. I'm ready to answer the questions either now or offline. So. Hello everyone, I am Praveen from Startup DigiBeings, where we are developing AI-powered virtual humans to help uh, companies humanize their customer experiences. Today, most of the communication with customers is handled by some kind of AI, whether it's a chatbot or a voice agent, uh, which are very highly scalable, but when it comes to building trust and emotional connection, they fail. And this is because most of the human uh, conversation is non-verbal, which includes gestures, facial expressions, and body language which is currently missing in these platforms. Uh, Digital Humans is a new evolving AI interface that allows us to bring those non-verbal aspects to human-machine communication. Now, companies which are already adopting Digital human strategy, they are seeing 5x increase in their uh, net promoter score and customer satisfaction scores. 89% of their users are actually preferring Digital Human channel over other channels. Today, Digital Humans are becoming a middle step between a chatbot and a real human agent, bringing in the advantage of both the channels. Uh, before we proceed further, I would like to show you uh, our, our demo of our version one, which uh, I mean, also you would understand what a digital human really means. Good morning. What day would you like to come in? What time on Monday do you want to come in? Let me confirm you want an appointment for Monday at 4 p.m. Is this correct? Perfect. So that was our short demo uh, of version one. Version two will be released in a couple of weeks and it will be it will look more realistic and we'll have more realistic facial animations 
today this digital humans are being used as customer support agents uh, healthcare coaches sales concierges in uh, sectors like insurance banking retail healthcare and they can be deployed over pc mobile web uh, or even on a kiosk and future they can be also deployed on ar and vr devices also uh, in revenue generation we had, uh, have uh, primarily three different packs a starter pack mainly we aim for uh, startups and uh, small enterprises where they can hire a digital human a low quality model digital human starting at 299 dollar a month for uh, for enterprise customers uh, the model which will, will be more realistic and will have more features and it will start from uh, 2000 dollars a month uh, we are mainly targeting enterprise customers who will allow us to develop end to end uh, uh, virtual human agents which involves uh, conversation design and also training and then deploy on their desired platforms a go to market strategy mainly involves uh, building channel partnership with uh, it companies and other other companies which are already working with such high value clients yeah. and uh, so far we have received interest from indian uh, it companies like tcs tech mahindra uh, ibm and we are also developing an in house project sara uh, which will allow us to uh, i mean uh, develop a virtual human with high iq and eq uh, which will also serve as a demo to close enterprise deals Sara is also incubated in IIT Hyderabad. Uh, it is India's first third wave intelligence project uh, where Sara learns from its experience in a virtual world and also it uses multimodal learning. It also focuses on mental health of the students and also aims to become a companion app, a companion virtual agent uh, in future. Uh, we have one paying client in India and uh, we have received interest from few more enterprise clients in India and UK for demos. And we won an award at uh, <coughs> Virtual Being Summit at LA, and we also won IBM National Hackathon in India. Uh, we're currently in, uh, incubated at Ethom Ventures, a uh, plugin nation program, and uh, we're also incubated at IIIT Hyderabad uh, uh, in India. Our uh, version two will release uh, in couple of weeks, which will which will look more realistic. Version three is where actually the virtual human will take multi-modal inputs and analyze it to devise a uh, conversation strategy to achieve specific business or social goals. Uh, then we will launch as a web-based self-service platform where companies can uh, uh, plug in their uh, conversational AI system, uh, whether it's built on IBM Watson or uh, or uh, Dialogflow or Amazon Lex or a uh, or uh, SAP conversation AI platform. And they can easily embed those links in their websites and apps very easily. Then we'll focus on VR and AR devices. Uh, so we're a diverse team, uh, ha having ten plus uh, years experience in building conversational AI agents, working with enterprises and building games. Uh, and uh, and I I also did uh, I'm also a certified conversational designer from Soul Machines, which is a company uh, first started developing virtual humans. Uh, so that's our team, and thank you very much for listening about pitch. If anybody is interested to connect, we are we are very really happy to. Go ahead. Uh, hi, I'm Vinayak. I'm one of the founders of Vouch. At Vouch, we help people earn money by recommending top top candidates they know personally and who they would vouch for. Uh, so what's wrong with the current hiring why should a product like vouch exist so uh, the amount of money spent on the us to hire a candidate on average is about 4000 and even after spending that kind of money uh, only 50% of the hires are total are total satisfactory and a large part of this money is going out to pay for external recruiters who are just crawling linkedin and recommending candidates based on that so there are like multitudes of problems that are along with the current uh, hiring hiring softwares first thing is that there are no specific tools to understand past performance data and even if you post a job online you'll be flooded by large volume of applicants it's humanly impossible to go through those applicants and figure out which is the best resume out there and speaking about resumes it is very much easier to make up a resume these days which can cheat the ats ats uh, algorithms and you know make it up up to the filter and even if you have a standardized test there are specific institutes out there that will help hack those tests just so that you can get a job and though all the current software hiring platforms that are right now built are mostly targeting at active job seekers but the best talent out there are not active job seekers the best talent out there leverages their network to find new opportunities they are not they are not the ones who are not who will be visiting job boards every time looking for new opportunities 
and there is no incentive in building a good network so at vouch at vouch we give vetted high quality candidates that are vouched by other people so in the core of our business we have two arms we have a consumer based arm and a business based arm in the consumer based arm we help companies source bright talent from our referral network and in our b2b we'll be an integration to to other ats so that they can have an automated reference check on candidates so uh, i'll speak mostly i'll speak more broadly on the consumer arm that we're building so in the consumer arm anybody can come up and we will be uh, authenticating them professionally and putting their social capital at risk they can vouch for people who they can personally know of so think of vouching as something as making a dream 11 team of your dream team if you're ever going to start a company so these are going to be the best engineers best marketers and best designers and you know and you're going to specifically tell hey how how do i know them and and the dis- and the relationship with you to them and upload to our referral network so with the information that you give and and putting your social capital we'll give a score to each referral and uploads into our network so whenever there is an open role in our partner companies our cutting and algorithm so cross through the entire network and 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 picks the best candidate to you and uh, you can uh, and uh, you can interview them afterwards so you know b2p are and this is one feature that people told us when we were demoing the product so reference check are the best method to bring past performance data but the current reference methods are slow and incomplete and it is it's heavily manual intensive and it takes about 90 minutes to complete a reference check and the reference check completion rates are only 30% so the in the the core of the technology of we are building we can be we can utilize that and plug it in as a b2b as an ats integration so that we can automate reference check with just a single with just a single button so uh, this is a summary of our product where we are a great way to filter top candidates and if you have good network you can make money by referring people that you already know about and you are who already impressed you and this is a great way to reach passive candidate which are otherwise impossible to get from job sites which are only focusing on active job seekers and the whole design that we built is mobile first where if you want to work for anyone if you are if you are uh, if you met somebody uh, like send the pictures to and you want to watch for him we can just take your put your phone and watch for him and the whole experience will take less than 5 minutes and this is a great way for underrepresented candidates to express themselves beyond their resumes so uh, so this is our business model we have uh, for b2b side and the b2c side in the b2b side we charge 10 dollar per api call for per reference check we charge 10 dollars and in the btc side uh, where the whole network is free free for use but we'll take a 3 percentage of annual salary per hire if any hire happens to us so as you know the recruitment industry is going to be uh, 1.1 trillion in 2023 and growing at 10 percent year over year so we find ourselves uh, in five to 10 years a company with 100 million annual recurring revenue so there are these are our three competitors we have socialite ai and week day who are our main competitors so uh, these are these are pretty new companies too and all why community in kopita so socialite ai is focusing on reference checking the enterprise segments and week day is trying to build a network and they are much younger company than us and uh, they will be our direct competitor in this space so we are a team of four i take uh, i take care of the product and the distribution side and my other three founders are hardcore engineers and this is our second startup our first hr tech startup referral which was also in the referral space was acquired uh, one and a half years back and uh, all all four of us know since ever so all all four of us were college batchmates and we been the startup journey ever since then so uh, our, our our product is already live uh, you can check it out thank you you let me know about your interest uh, startups that are exciting from your perspective i'll make the connection so that you can do the deep dive with the startups and really understand what should be the scope of work and how i can support the startup or that startup and what could be the investment or equity and things of that nature so yeah please uh, connect with me later on and just for one second could you please turn on your video everybody i would just like to have one picture please turn on your video everybody everybody is beautiful everybody is a smart person so no need to hide anything thanks a lot i really really appreciate uh, uh, you joining the call today